tell everybody we're working our way through Alabama, headed to Mississippi. Right? You're headed to Mississippi today, right? Hello, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. I hope you're all doing well today. Yes, we're headed to Mississippi today because I want to go visit the museum and the grave of one of the most influential musicians and songwriters of all time, the great Jimmy Rogers. He had a life that you could win an Academy Award based off of. Cool bridge. I love it. All right, here's our welcome to Mississippi sign. He didn't care. Here we are. There we go, we're looking for that cemetery. All right, it is a very gusty day out here, but I think this is what we're looking for, Oak Grove Baptist Church Cemetery, right over here. I'm seeing a sign over here, a historical marker sign, so I'm assuming he's buried right over here near these trees, right off the side of the road. Yes, indeed. That big headstone right there is his. It says, Jimmy Rogers, father of country music, singing winningly with storytelling clarity and physicality of the real lives and fondest dreams of his down-home audience with varied musical backing that ranged from his own solitary guitar to rural pickers, horns, and Hawaiian bands in just five years as a star before his early death in 1933, Jimmy Rogers placed a defining stamp on what country music would be. Nashville's Country Music Hall of Fame simply calls Meridian's singing brakeman the man who started it all. Here they have a copy of his record No Hard Times on display and some historical photos. There he is. It says Jimmy Rogers never heard the term country music. As he performed in the 1920s and 30s, the genre was just being defined, yet the subjects he sang about were subjects country music would take to heart day to day. Life at work, at home, holding on to traditions in a fast-changing modern world, and hot times on Saturday nights. He wrote songs about trains, outlaws, hobos, and cowpokes, as well as dealing with loneliness and love. He learned much about these themes exploring the barbershops, pool halls, and theaters of Meridian in the years before World War I and more working with the m and Railroad section crews that were based here and supervised by his father, Aaron Rodgers. Jimmy's music would be varied and as forward-looking as the bustling railroad town. His Jimmy Rogers train songs were presented as stories from a contemporary who got around, not a nostalgia. He was reported to have first sung the Brakeman's Blues for Friends on the station's platform here in Meridian. He virtually invented the guitar playing, singing songwriter who reports on his own life, even singing of his tuberculosis and of his own looming death. Adept at personalizing songs, he was equally comfortable adapting old ballads, piecing together new blues verses and identifying material by other songwriters that would work well for him. Rogers with the Carter family, famous Carter family of Virginia, were standard bearers of domesticity, updated church-derived harmonies, Jimmy Rogers introduced more daring themes and more aggressive musical styles. At once a charming rounder, outsider, a working singing brakeman, and a master of show business, Roger was larger than life to fans, yet never above them, becoming a model for country stars who followed. Roger's microphone enabled plain talk vocal tones held his Local accent intact and his strong sense of drama and comedy alike made his lyrics come to life. He modernized down-home singing even as he brought details of Mississippi life to the world at large. In his own recording years, 1927 to 1933, his records sold well not only in the South, throughout the United States, but across the world. 
says here, Jimmy Rogers, 112 recordings were varied enough to profoundly influence hillbilly blues, honky tonk, cowboy balladry, bluegrass, rockabilly, and country artists as varied as Gene Autry, the Delmore Brothers, Woody Guthrie, Ernest Tubb, Patsy Montana, Tommy Duncan and Bob Wills, Bill Monroe, Lefty Frizzell, Hank Snow, Johnny Cash, Merle Haggard, and Tanya Tucker. In the 50s, when country music matured enough to trace its own origins, Jimmy Rogers became known as the father of country music. That is, that is how you do a plaque to a legend. That's a lot of information for people that may not know anything about him. Really helps you to appreciate Jimmy Rogers. Now this is the family headstone, but he is right over here. America's Blue Yodeler. Jimmy James Charles Rogers, 1897 to 1933. Buried here beside his Loving wife, Carrie Cecil Williamson, wife of Jimmy Rogers, and the first lady of country music. You can see she outlived him by <clears throat> almost 30 years. And then over here we have Carrie Anita Rogers Court, who passed away in 1993. She was the daughter of Jimmy and Carrie. And also, going down this row, we have June Rebecca Rogers. You can see she did not live but just about six, seven months. Daughter of Jimmy and Carrie Rogers. Jimmy Rogers was always famous for wearing that train conductor's hat when he performed. Now I'm going to go in town because they have a museum to Jimmy Rogers here. Oh, this should be amazing. It says, Every note of country music that is played, sung, written, thought about, thought this universe today, yesterday, and tomorrow all goes back to one man, Jimmy Rogers, the father of country music. That was Marty Stewart saying that. A great picture of Jimmy right up there in the door. on the National Register of Historic Places I can see. And Museum to the Man. So as we enter this room, everything in here, all of the furniture came from Jimmy Rogers' house. The only thing not on display right now is his famous guitar that is normally right there. It's at the birthplace of country music in Bristol, but that, that is actually the most expensive guitar, $2 million guitar. Take a look, we have his 78 player. You're going to be amazed at some of the artifacts in here. The piano that he and Elsie McWilliams composed their music on. Cool is that? Now keep in mind, like I said, all the furniture was from his house. So. Like that. Furniture right here from the Blue Yodeler's Paradise in Caraville, Texas. And here is Tuxedo. That is so neat. And then the hat that goes along with it. And that was his travel case that went on the back of his car. And you'll also see that in some pictures as well. That's great. There's a rocking chair. Uh -huh. Now right here beside where the guitar, the $2 million guitar usually is, is Jimmy's denim jacket. He used to wear a lot and perform in his travel bag that he always had, that had his name leather tooled into it. Exclusive Victor artist it says. 
hand-tooled leather bag was custom made for Jimmy and marked O.W. Jolly, uh, Lubbock, Texas. Jimmy's boots. His conductor hat. His spurs. And his vest. Those are Jimmy Rogers bullhorns up there. There's a plaque even. Look, they have a picture of Waylon. They were saying, you know, Jimmy only had like five years of making music, but he was actually, he's in the Blues Hall of Fame, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Country Hall of Fame, Songwriters Hall of Fame, Gospel Hall of Fame. Look, there's Hank Snow and Ernest Hub. Not uh, famous guitar that is out on loan. Ernest Tubb actually had that guitar for like 20 years after, after Jimmy. Gotta love both of those guys. We vlogged Ernest Tubb's record shop before it closed. And Hank Snow, we actually stayed at his house and ranch and vlogged that too on my channel. Look at that old intercom system. How cool is that? And some ads for Jimmy performing. says this case was used by Jimmy while working on the Southern Railroad. It's pretty interesting. And then says that that was used also, that coffee pot. There's a handkerchief that he gave his brother Talmadge in 1938. And some family letters that he wrote to his sister. That display is of the some items from the Taft Hotel where he passed away. Look at that case. There's his shaving kit and his eyeglasses and everything. Shoe polishing kit it looks like. A little bit of everything in there. Here's a mandolin that his guitar player, William Burke gave to someone and said that he played this while he was playing in a band with Jimmy. Songwriters Hall of Fame, National Academy Recording Artists Hall of Fame. This chair says that it was made, handmade, straight back chair, made by Jimmy Rogers during the early years of his marriage to Carrie. And this cabinet over here was used by Jimmy and his family at the Blue Yodeler's Paradise in Caraville, Texas as well as all this really cool <laughs> furniture, all the couches and everything. How cool is that? Look at the ornate furniture. Some of his awards up here, Nashville Songwriter Hall of Fame right there. The Blues Award. This is just unbelievable. This museum's amazing. So that was all his. That was his dinner table. His sink in here. Painting of him. His name in the fretboard. Old cash register. And then lots and lots of original letters. That's all his handwriting, all in ink, not copies or anything. Jimmy's ashtray, East Coast Railroad Company. Love to all your brother, Jimmy Rogers. That black award is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And there it looks like another 78 record player. Some family photos on top. This place is amazing. That is uh, his grandson. Painting of his grandson from the house. Here's a picture of Ernest Tubb playing that famous guitar. Look at the fretboard. You can see Jimmy's name on it. Right 
on the air. Down here, a lot of this is dedicated to his sister-in-law, Elsie McWilliams, who wrote much of the music for Jimmy Rogers during his early years. And she's also a member of the Country Music Hall of Fame. Here's her outfit, her evening gown and everything it says. When she was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame in 1979, And then also her Country Music Songwriter Award right there that we saw. Jimmy's in the other room also. Signed picture to her in the back from Jimmy. And then it says this guitar was a gift to her from Jimmy. Very cool. It's a Gibson. And then Elsie's Close and Play. That's Elsie. There she is signing records. <laughs> That's awesome. And this is also from the Careville, Texas house. The last 18 months, that's when they moved to Texas. So that's where a lot of this furniture all came from. Wow, what a place this is. I can't recommend enough for you to get out here. <laughs> Man. All right, that was a lot of fun. I'm able to buy a couple of postcards to help support the cause. We're gonna see one more thing here in town. I was warned by the museum, this is not a very safe neighborhood we're going to. Highland Park, last stop on our tour today, because right over here by this train, in front of the train, they have a nice memorial statue to Jimmy. It says, his is the music of America. He sang the songs of the people he loved, of a young nation growing strong. His was an America of glistening rails, thundering boxcars, and rain-swept nights of lonesome prairies, great mountains, and a high blue sky. He sang of the bayous and the cotton fields, the weeded plains of the little towns, the cities, and the winding rivers of America. We listened, we understood Jimmy Rogers, the singing brakeman. America's Blue Yodeler. His music will live forever. Give him the thumbs up right there. Very cool little train down there. And like I said, they have a big train right here behind him. And the other side, look at that. Man, they have a whole memorial. It says he was born here in 1897, died in New York, son of Aaron W. and Eliza Bozeman Rogers, married to Carrie Williamson, moved to Texas in 1929. Silver tones of his voice, the magic strumming of his guitar, the haunting melody, and the heart throbs of his American folk songs brought comfort, joy, and inspiration to the millions who heard him on stage and broadcast and on recordings. Through long years of hardship to the triumphs of the fame, his simple philosophy of life and his devotion to family and friends remain unchanged because his religion was love. The underest dog is just as good as I am, and I'm just as good as the toppest dog. And just a little further behind the trains that we were just looking at is the former location of the Jimmy Rogers Museum right here at the old Meridian Depot building. They have a birthplace of Jimmy Rogers placard here. They were telling me they actually moved it to the house because they thought that this park was a little less safe than it should be. Well my friends I think we're gonna call it a day. I have a little bit of bad news when I was in the museum they asked me what I was in town for, and I said I was going to the Willie Nelson concert tomorrow, and they said, no, you're not. Somebody in Willie's band got COVID, and they canceled that show, so doesn't look like we'll be doing that. I'll have to rearrange my plans. That is a bummer. I had second row to see Willie Nelson. We were going to get one heck of a show, and I guess the makeup date is uh, a date that I already have tickets to another concert, so bummer. Hope you enjoyed this vlog. If it's your first time watching, please 
subscribe and hit the notification bell. We'll see you all next time. Have a great night. Good.